Welcome back everybody, Mike here, and it's about time to do that end of summer slash fall EDC video, because honestly, it's been quite some time since I have done one. So we're gonna quickly go over the major items that I carry out there with me on a daily basis and why I carry the ones I do. And if you guys are interested in getting kind of more in depth, I do have a lot of dedicated reviews on these items already up on the channel and some more of the things we're gonna talk about today will come in the future. Also, I have all this stuff listed in the parts list down in the description so you can do all of your own research and read into these things should you desire. Let's go ahead and start off with the bag. So I carry a bag year round with me and I kind of up and download depending on what time of year it is, what I'm carrying on my person and kind of what I am doing out there recreationally. And the first bag we're gonna talk about is the Vertex Ready Pack 2.0 right here. So this is the one I've carried around for about the past two years. Uh, not necessarily my favorite bag, but it's extremely durable, very reliable, and overall Vertex just makes an absolutely great product. So it's gonna last you a very long time. Uh, my kind of pet peeves with it is it doesn't have a lot of dedicated kind of storage pockets in there. They kind of leave that up to you with their old Tactigami system. Uh, but these are not the cheapest bags out there. So you spend 150 to 180 bucks on the bag, and then you can get really quickly another $100 deep in all the different Tactigami pouches. Uh, whether you want to do that or not is up to you, but you can approach the $300 mark on these bags really quickly. What I will say is they're actually really well made, like solid. This thing has been absolutely thrown around on the range in my truck for the past few years, and there's not a stitch coming out of that thing. And again, by no means a bad bag. It's just I like more divided internal storage native to the bag, not having to buy aftermarket stuff or stuff from them. I also did just get their gamut bag right here, so I will be testing this one out for the winter and kind of give you guys a report back on that. And if you want to see that dedicated review, it is up on the channel. If you get in depth on the Vertex Ready Pack 2.0. Before we get into that next bag, we got to give a little love to the sponsor of today's video, and that is going to be LAS Concealment. Absolutely great holster company. I've been carrying LAS Concealment holsters for a couple of years. They've got a really good set of options. They've got some really awesome designs out there. Great company, great quality, and they're actually located just a couple miles from me. So if you are interested in picking up a solid concealable carry holster, check out LAS. They are definitely gonna have some cool options for you to go with. All right, let's move into the fanny packs. Yes, I have been wearing a couple of these and testing them out over the summer because it's hot and sometimes I don't wanna carry the big bag with me everywhere. And it seems to be that everybody wants to carry the waist pack or the fanny pack around and look like a tactical marsupial or a kangaroo. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the AWS gear. This is called the Snack Pack. So they definitely had Rangers in mind when they designed this because we love our snacks. This is actually a really great bag right here. Uh, they are berry compliant. If you don't know what berry compliant means, basically everything in this bag was sourced and made in the United States because this is battle gear. They actually do a lot of kit for a special operations unit. They're right outside of Fort Bragg. So this is a legit combat style bag, but it's got a lot of really great options for those of us just walking around on a daily basis. It's got lots of storage in it and it is CCW ready. You've got two main exterior zippered pockets, a third in the back, which is Velcro lined. There's tons of modularity here. Zippered mesh liner, which is removable on that main storage pocket in there. You get a low key color option if you want it. You get camo if you want it. They got tiger stripe. They got all the good stuff for you. It's a moderate size. You've got a tourniquet bungee across the bottom. And overall, this is going to be a waist or fanny pack that is just going to last you years. And next up for my waist pack fans is the new one from Blue Alpha Gear. I really do love these guys. They are a US made company again as well. And this thing is just ultra sleek and a solid bag if you are looking for ultra low key carry. This thing is super sleek, super smooth, and an awesome low key look extremely durable. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's got modular Velcro on the inside of that. Uh, the storage is really a good size. It's got that classic look to it. If you're into the waist pack thing or the fanny pack looking thing, two zippered pockets, and just that overall classic look to it. This is about as beach friendly as it gets when it comes to a waist pack. And next up, getting into a more moderately sized version is going to be the Sheepdog Response Waist Pack. I know they call it a waist pack. I'm still going to call it a fanny pack. Overall, this is another great low-key bag that's just got a little bit more size and some really good options built into it. But it is still very sleek and low-key. You're going to have two main exterior zippered pockets, one zippered interior pocket, a mesh pocket on the rear for quick grab items like, say, your wallet, some credit cards, something like that. Great YKK zippers and pulls. Honestly, these are my favorite pulls because they just make it so easy to open this bag all the way out and see everything. 
the high vis interior that orange is absolutely awesome because you immediately recognize what you're going for plus i just love the color orange it's got a modular velcro setup in there for edc and ccw and hands down just appears to be a very high quality bag don't know whether that one is completely made in the us or not that wasn't listed on the website but overall an intermediate sized bag it is solid and if you didn't already know it all of these bags can either be worn around you as a waist pack or you can throw them over the shoulder or do the whole euro pack thing cross chest um, pretty much all of these will fit depending on the size of you if you're a girthy individual in the shoulders you're going to have some trouble with that but most of these things will work as a kind of sling bag too and again remember if you guys want to do any of your own research on this stuff i'll have all those links at the parts list for you and make sure you do subscribe to the channel so if you find this interesting entertaining or insightful in any way make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments because that's a huge help to the channel and it signals to youtube to push this video into the algorithm which will expose people maybe that have never seen edc or ccw style content before which just helps us all in the end all right next up we're going to talk about some of the small tools and kit like this little mini gerber multi-tool here so i keep reaching for this thing more and more and it's just ultra simple it's got a knife it's got a bottle opener and it's got a little flathead and phillips head screwdriver in there and that's really about it it's super simple it's super cheap and i keep it on the outside pocket of either the waist pack or the backpack that i'm wearing and quite honestly i reach for that thing a lot now if you need the upscaled version i also do like to carry one of the big gerber suspension tools like this so i've got a couple of these uh, one in a couple of my bags and i've got one on each of my gun belts and quite honestly a multi-tool is just so helpful to have with you out in the world now this one is going to have all of your basic major tools it is really not that expensive as compared to some of the other ones out there it can be had fairly cheaply and overall it's just going to get the job done for you when you need simple things like a knife maybe a saw some screwdrivers all the basic stuff in the multi-tool world and then it's cheap enough to where if you break something on it you're not going to cry about it you're not going to break the bank i think for like 30 to 50 bucks or something like that a couple pieces of kit that i will always have with me or in my bag is going to be something like this ltc med kit right here it's a solid little setup and i will also always carry a straight tourniquet with me like that as well uh cat gen 7 right there but the ltc med kit is good because it's got a hyphen vent it's got quick clot in there it's got a swat t it's got a mini set of trauma shears some gloves all the basic stuff you want in kind of like a pocket style kit and then i've got obviously that big cat gen 7 should i really need to clamp down on someone with a true tourniquet a couple of things i'm always carrying around is one a sharpie because it seems to be no matter whether i'm on the range or just out there i always need to mark something and then my little notebook right here so this is from pop off leather you put your kind of loche term style or lectern or whatever you want to call them notebooks in there and i just keep my little uh, zebra pens i know these aren't the most expensive pens in the world but i've been using them since i was in high school they're awesome they get the job done and i just love the smell of that leather binder right there and i love writing things down because when you write something down you generally remember it better than when you put it in your phone or just try to remember it i'm always also carrying something like this around it looks very low key it looks like a sharpie but in fact it is not so that is a piece of stainless steel sharpened in there there's ones that are titanium g10 material it's got some weight to it and uh, it's a little low-key self-defense item because sometimes you can't carry knives or other things into certain places and generally people aren't going to take a second look at that sharpie so i tend to keep that one on me in the bag as well let's move into some of the wearables and people are always commenting on that watch right there in the videos so i used to be a big luminox guy but i found these watch uh, this one is the isobrite afterburner but the parent company is armor light they're just awesome watches tritium dials on them super bright different colors so you'll never be out of orientation with your watch if it's laying down on something you'll always know which side's up right which side's high noon um, awesome i've been wearing this thing for about a year now i beat the tar out of it <laughs> i wear it every day to the range the glass isn't scratched the housing is going strong the tritium vials are still strong overall a great watch not the cheapest ones in the world but this is the kind of thing where you buy once cry once and it just lasts you years in fact i liked it so much i ordered one of the ones with the kind of dressier stainless steel bands it's got a different face i think it's called the destroyer it'll be here soon and of course i'll throw that in probably the winter edc update video i also wear g-shock watches but i left that one at work in the locker but it's just the gd100 i think is the model of it it's pretty simple pretty plain but you can beat the absolute tar out of those watches and they will keep going so i think the first one of those g-shock watches i bought um, that lasted me through the second half of my military life it went through ranger school it went through tons of jumps it went through a couple trips overseas 
It lasted a couple years at home with some battery changes. And then ultimately when I said I was gonna get rid of it, my mom was like, absolutely not. And she wanted it as kind of like a memento for my military service. And she actually kept that watch in her purse until she passed on and now I have it again. So those watches will absolutely go forever. And next up, since nobody can see in the dark, let's talk about some light. So first of all, you've got a light on your phone right there, right? There's a little flashlight built into it. So that's always a big help. But two other lights I'm gonna have with me is usually something like this Streamlight Protac 2.0 right here. This is kind of that intermediate size light. It's like a thousand lumens. They got a second version of this that's like 2000 lumens now, but the Protac HLX, it's just a great handheld light. You know, rear activation button, you've got 10 tap mode, which is like strobe if you wanna have that. And also I'm generally gonna carry this one too. So this is the wedge version of it, much smaller, kind of a rotary knob design, but it's a lot easier to walk around with this in your pocket than this thing right here. If you just look at the size difference between those two things. Um, ultimately, Streamlight's a great company. It's probably the best bang for the buck when it comes to value in lights. And these lights will absolutely last years. And another wearable, let's talk about our wedding rings right here, right? Because don't let your girl catch you without your wedding ring on, right? So I've tried a bunch of those different silicone or rubberized rings and they all kind of sucked. So I finally found the Groove Life ring. I got that thing. It's got those little sweat grooves in it. And the other ones all either had sharp edges or they were just, they didn't fit right or they just rubbed into your finger. Um, and that's the whole reason to go to one of these things is so it's more comfortable out there, especially if you're doing a lot of work on the range and stuff. You don't want to bang up your nice engagement or wedding ring. These are great, but the other ones just sucked. And this is not the cheapest one out there. And I think there's like, I don't know, 50 different colors of that thing. And they're probably like 30 bucks or something like that. But it's kind of one of those things where you buy it once, it lasts you years and you don't really care about it at that point because it's just so comfortable. Let's get into some of the edged products that I carry around with me all day with my Premier Blade and that's gonna be the Radic right here. This is a US design and US made blade from Schrade. Absolutely beautiful knife. You can kind of see the detail in there. And uh, overall, the operation of it's perfect. It's got a beautiful kind of arc to that blade in there. Uh, not the cheapest one out there, but again, that's the premier blade that I carry around with me. After that, when I want something maybe a little bit smaller, is going to be like this sheepdog right here. I love this little blade with that carbon fiber look and that kind of uh, absolutely badass cleaver looking blade on there. Just a great little setup. And these things I think are still like under a hundred bucks. And they're just great blade steel, great sharpness, and overall a really cool look. And they're an intermediate size, so you can walk around with that thing in the pocket all day. And my more budget-friendly option is going to be the Pillar right here from CRKT. Again, a cleaver-style blade, liner lock-style blade, and it's just a great little setup. I think these things are like 30 bucks, um, so you're not going to be mad if you bang it up. Great blade still on it. And again, um, most of us probably just going to be opening boxes with something like this, so it's probably going to last you years, so I don't think 30 bucks is a bad price, you know, for a blade that works that good. Another part that many of you have probably been waiting for, let's talk about the CCW stuff. So first up, since it was summer, it's hot, I'm usually carrying something smaller. It's been the CR920P a lot. And the reason for that is this thing is the whole package. Now I've got a full video on this. This is basically a micro with 13 round capacity. It's got a Holosun 507K compensator integrated onto that thing, a light. It's everything you need. And I'm carrying that in my Hilliker holster, which is specifically made for this. So you can have a mag caddy and everything. So great setup here. Again, I've got a full video on that if you want to check that out. If I'm not worried about super light carry, then I will be carrying probably my PDP Compact and my Tier 1 Concealed MSP holster. It's really nice because I love the PDPs. They are my favorite pistol. TLR1 light is one of my favorite MEPA mounted lights. And the MSP holster is great because as long as that TLR1 is on there, it's generally going to fit just about every modern striker fired rig. Got the Mag Caddy on there. Overall, a great setup. And I will have links for this thing at the build list. You can check these holsters out if you are interested. Now, if I decide to carry a Glock or I'm doing some range work out there, a lot of times I will be carrying my 45 MOS. And this thing is an absolute monster. It's the full package and it will fit in that MSP holster as well. Just like that, as you can see, perfect fit. But this thing is awesome because I built this. I've done a video on this. You can check it out. And it's what I consider the most complete kind of duty hardcore Glock there is. It's got the Radiant Barrel and Comp. You've got the Radiant Guardian, the RMR, the Streamlight again, Overwatch Trigger, SLR Magwell, Factor Magwells. The thing is just an absolute hammer on the range. Again, if you want to see the full video on that, I'll link that down in the description or put it up here. But this thing is a beast out there on the range. And always remember, you got to stay healthy and hydrated. So I'm generally always carrying one of these around with me. These are the Iron Infidel Battle Bottles. 
absolutely love these things. There's storage space in both of these things for your cell phones, your wallet, your keys, all that. This is the big boy. I think it's like 64 ounces, and this is like the 32 ounce version. Hydro flask inside of there, and they've got really cool designs, all kinds of different colors. Um, so I'm always carrying a water bottle around with me because in the state of Arizona, you go a couple hours without water out in the sun, and you're likely gonna <laughs> have some trouble. Um, they're not that expensive, and they just come with everything you could absolutely need as far as a water bottle goes. All right, remember, I've got dedicated views on a lot of that stuff, so if you want to get into more detail, you can check those out on the channel. If you guys want to support me in any way, you can check out the Patreon. Huge thank you to them. They're a massive support structure here at Tactical Considerations. You can use any of the links down in the description or any of the links at my website. Those all help me out and help this keep going. Of course, subscribing is a massive support structure. Commenting down below and letting me know your thoughts is a big help as well. Keep doing it out on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.